right? <laughs> okay. Um, I haven't had a, any uh, graphic tool here installed, so uh, I had to be creative. So uh, welcome at my presentation. My name is uh, Miroslav Horvat, um, and I'm going to talk uh, about uh, virtual terrains so with Blender Terrain Tools, which is a um, uh, uh, Blender add-on I've been working um, oh, probably already eight years, but it's still not released. Uh, but let's talk about it a little bit later. So uh, uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, I work as a uh, technical environment artist, and uh, now I do quite a lot of things, stuff for um, uh, for uh, R&D for a new engine uh, we are working on at Bohemia Interactive. So uh, that's my company. Uh, uh, is there anyone who knows this company or plays the games? Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, um, so I'm wearing this Daisy T-shirt. So there are two more. There are some uh, key rings. So just uh, if you, if you want, just check it. It's uh, PR. <laughs> it's for free. Um, so uh, this company it's actually um, well known for uh, titles, game titles uh, like uh, uh, original Operation Flashpoint, uh, Arma series. Uh, all of these are uh, like uh, military shooter uh, games. Uh, in a really, uh, well, let's say, big uh, uh, environment. Uh, there are some more titles like um, Take On Helicopters, which is kind of like a um, helicopter game. Uh, Take On Mars, uh, that's a simulator of uh, astronaut being on, um, on Mars and doing some tasks. Uh, there are actually a few more, but just um, check, uh, check on our website. Uh, I just quickly have to turn my notes. I will continue. Okay. So, um, so I guess I don't need this for a while. Let's step to the to the showcases actually. Uh, yeah. Just a sec. So uh, uh, one more note, uh, uh, Bohemia Interactive has uh, their studios in Czech Republic. There are three studios, one in Bratislava uh, uh, in, at Slovakia, and uh, there's um, another one uh, in Thailand, and uh, really newly uh, uh, opened one here in Amsterdam. So if you will stay till the end, uh, I will have some uh, job offers for you. And now let's start with the uh, with the tool tool itself. Uh, so there's a. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so let's uh, have a look at the tool. So I have it already uh, enabled as an add-on. So wh what this tool is actually about. Um, so uh, as my says, is create landscapes or environment for the games. Uh, uh, when I came to the company and work with the, uh, with the uh, start working with the tools, I find out that there are some um, gaps in the development or in the pipeline uh, of the creation of, uh, of our environment. And um, uh, I've been already playing with the, with Blender for maybe four years back then. Uh, so I saw quite a lot of opportunities to uh, take advantage of uh, existing features, but uh, it just needed kind of like chaining them together, make an automation. Uh, so let's say sculpting, uh, painting, uh, uh, there's quite a lot of them. Some modifiers can be really used for uh, <coughs> uh, development of, uh, of uh, believable uh, environments for the games. Uh, at the beginning I was uh, I was really new to um, Blender API, but after all of those years, uh, I, uh, at the first place, I just wanted to fill those gaps in the in the in the development of the maps. But uh, then, after eight years, uh, I get into I get very familiar with uh, API, and right now, this tool can really replace the, our internal tools. Uh, but I have to still kind of use the original one for uh, making the data and so on. Okay, so. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to import uh, 
terrain uh, with uh, satellite imagery which we use uh, to texture it or as a reference. So first of all I need uh, let's say let's have it here call it intro I use uh, GDAL, I'm not sure if you're aware of this um, actually my long background is in GIS so this is the um, uh, geo tool, let's call it, uh, for processing geo data. Of course, we work quite a lot of with these data. Uh, let's import satellite imagery. Let's import elevation. Okay, and uh, so now I'm going to uh, the Blender or the tool creating just a preview of um, of the area. Uh, this is the uh, uh, map from Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead called Takistan. It's a fictional map based on real data somewhere in Afghanistan, uh, Yakavalan province, I guess. Okay, uh, so uh, right now I have a preview of, uh, of the area of the data and I can now uh, import it. Uh, let's see, let me just quickly change the DPI. Very small. I Oh, I guess you can see it actually, right? The text is, text is fine, right? Or you need it a little bit bigger? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so once again, uh, let's uh, import this area. Oh, let's call it value. So basically, this is the initial step I needed to uh, to work with the terrain. Um, so it's it's there. You can um, basically fly over with the camera. Um, so when basically right now I can use um, uh, let's say the sculpting mode uh, to um, to add some details. Uh, and right away I can just uh, export it back. Um, uh, there are a few more uh, features uh, I'm going to show right now. Uh, one one good point actually is um, so um, when I import the data, uh, import uh, that piece of land, uh, I create a new scene. So I'm actually then allowed to. Whoa, lovely. Okay. Uh, do I have it saved? Why did that happen? Uh, okay, so I have I have uh, all of these as a as a kind of layers. Okay, I have to put it again. Okay, and yeah, it works. So uh, uh, I can I can have more of these location uh, imported in one file. Uh, so I have uh, just uh, kind of like warning what, the, the, what was the previous one, so I won't import the same one. So I won't rewrite some sculpting or painting. So if I um, I'll create a new one, uh, there should be another, another location. Show. Yeah. Uh, one thing I really hate about this thing is that um, there's no possibility to lock the view uh, in the top ortho. Uh, I'm not sure if you have an experience. I, I've been looking in the API, but I haven't found anything. So, so sometimes uh, maybe an experienced uh, user just starts doing this and um, uh, actually uh, the uh, picking location actually works only from a or top, top down, uh, top down uh, view. So I always have to just do this. And uh, but as I said, I have no way so far uh, to lock it in this in this view. Can you uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's uh, my typical typical setup one. Okay, I'll I'll try that. Thank you. Yeah, that, that, yeah, actually that was, um, <coughs> I had that in mind, but there was something else later in the development why I had to re still stick into 3D, but we'll see in, in the future. Thanks. Um, 
so was there um, um, yeah for, uh, so as you can see there are quite a lot of uh, panels here uh, uh, basically I'm going to just uh, show you some uh, quick shading which uh, it's for me at least uh, uh, very valuable so basically this is the, uh, the textured one I can have this smoother than well this is the settings you usually can find in the in the UI but uh, I like to have it you know in at one place so typical typical matcap you can you can take the uh, shading directly from here. You don't have to go here. Uh, and I also like to have uh, the tessellation sometimes, so I know where the cracks will be um, on a terrain. Oops, it was too much. Yeah. yeah so I uh, I have the uh, I have the terrain triangulated uh, the way that it is really in the engine, so it's really one to one. Export and import. Okay, um, there's um, also this surface painter, which basically, as you may know from uh, Unreal or Unity engine, you can paint the uh, we call it detail textures like grass, rocks, sand, uh, dark on the terrain. Uh, I don't have uh, any file here set up for that, uh, but I'll I'll show you um, I'll show you I'll show you a video. This one. So um, this is uh, so the version of the uh, of the Blender terrain uh, uh, tools in this video is a little bit older. Uh, it doesn't have a, a UI basically or really small UI. So uh, this is one of the map uh, with the object uh, imported. I will get to imp um, import of the object uh, a little bit later. So uh, this tool uh, allows us, as I said, uh, paint. Um, uh, surfaces on the ground, as you can, you could see. I'll just find it. So uh, each of these surfaces, as you can see, like your soil, uh, dirt, whatever, uh, uh, has its own uh, color, which can be seen here, assigned. And this one will be uh, painted on a on a on a terrain, and later exported uh, as an image and imported to our engine, which can uh, make all the calculation and and. Uh, proper placement of the correct textures, uh, but in this demo uh, or in this video, there's just uh, there's just the colors, um, and it can be switched to also visualize the the exact uh, tiled uh, textures. And uh, actually, reason why uh, I I made this because uh, we don't have this function in our tools for the terrains now, but with the new engine, uh, it's already implemented. Um, when when we needed to paint these uh, uh, these textures or uh, surfaces, we usually use uh, Photoshop, which is 2D, and we have kind of like uh, um, possibility to export bounding boxes of the of the buildings or all all the objects in the map. But the problem is that th these are just uh, bounding boxes. So, for example, if I wanted to uh, draw nice. Uh, Path walk to uh, the doors from the road. I didn't know like where, where the doors are, so uh, that's why I um, make it available to import um, uh, also the objects. As you can see, so the the, the objects were uh, imported here, and now uh, whoever was working on this uh, on this area could just write the, the pathway directly uh, to the to the doors. Is there it's not anything special? Okay. Yeah, th this is basically the exported uh, texture, which then is uh, imported into uh, our tools and prepared for the use. Uh, another showcase, it's from, um, well, it's not really a showcase, uh, it's from Take On Helicopters, uh, where we had these huge maps, or there was a Seattle map. Uh, uh, Oh, that's a really small picture, but whatever. Uh, so th there was two maps. Uh, one was the, the Seattle. Uh, it was an uh, area 60 by 60 kilometers around the downtown. Uh, and the other one, uh, there was even bigger. There was 120 kilometers uh, big. Uh, there was um, kind of a, a 
South it, it was called actually South Asia um, South Asia map, and we had to actually do quite a lot of uh, sculpting. I guess there, yeah, there are more screenshots. So this is the downtown Seattle. Yeah, and, and the biggest problem on this map was that usually when you download um, when you download or get uh, GIS data, special elevation, uh, the, um, the areas where the sea or oceans is, it's flat, so it's at zero elevation. Uh, so I had to basically uh, do quite a lot of sculpting to uh, get the seabed properly done. I could use, I don't know, word machine or uh, other uh, similar tools, but the problem was that I needed to know how the, how the objects react because um, uh, they could be uh, floating or maybe be sunken in, in the terrain, so I had the chance to fix it uh, right away and not having to uh, import something, check it, and vice versa. That would be really time consuming. Um, I guess I have just a um, small import here. Uh, oh. uh, of the terrain. Yeah, so this is this is the actually the, the the sculpted one. So if I um, shrink this one, so uh, maybe it's not really seen, but there there's already a a, a, a seabed. So uh, if I scale this, so there's really a, so the this black plane represents the the sea level. Uh, just recently for um, uh, uh, Daisy, oh actually I haven't mentioned Daisy, that's actually um, <laughs> uh, our current top seller I would say. Um, it's a, it's a, uh, a game which already I guess uh, sold uh, over three and a half million copies and uh, there's uh, quite a lot of people playing it on the servers. Uh, so it's basically a, a survival game with lots of zombies uh, and Daisy kind of started this, this era of of, uh, of zombie games, uh, I guess two two years ago, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, I've been asked to uh, uh, to create some tool for a uh, uh, forest creation. So uh, this uh, this map I used at Daisy game. It's uh, from Arma 2 called Chernarus, which is a post-Soviet. Uh, a fictional count, a fictional uh, land, uh, 15 by 15 kilometers big, and um, so so the map was already prepared. But um, uh, back then, when I was working on it, I guess uh, seven years ago, uh, the performance was too poor, <laughs> or not, not not that bad. But uh, uh, we had really dense forests. We can we eventually had to. Uh, chop down the uh, uh, the density, but now we can do some more uh, magic. So I've been asked to uh, write a new tool to place those trees uh, and uh, make kind of like a prototyping tool for that. So um, yep. So um, this is basically. Basically, Chernarus uh, and it's all beauty, uh, and these polygons uh, they represent the the shapes of, of the forest, as well as uh, each of these has um, a custom attribute, uh, which uh, or this shape file, oh, sorry, these polygons was actually imported from S3 shape files, where uh, uh, each each uh, polygon has its own. Uh, identifier in the uh, attribute table, which basically says uh, what kind of uh, forest uh, uh, should be generated. So we can see it here. So if I place the 3D cursor and press F, uh, yeah, so there's, there's supposed to be a spruce forest with some settings. Uh, uh, okay, this one is not defined yet, but let's check. Uh, this is the Pine forest uh, with all all the trees, tree types which will be uh, or tree species will be really uh, generated in there with their uh, settings of uh, uh, density, uh, um, size, and rotation uh, randomization. 
Uh, and so for this presentation, I made a little showcase uh, how it looks like, but usually uh, I was also doing some kind of uh, prototyping, so uh, I'm allowed to, oh, sorry, I have to select it. I'm allowed to uh, generate those trees only in the selected forest, basically selected um, uh, polygon, or uh, to do just a batch processing, which is uh, quite fast, um, and it, it, it will be saved into, uh, into a text file, which can be then imported into our engine or our tools. Um, so let's find that location. Yeah. So this is the uh, spruce forest. Uh, yes, the problem is with this, uh, with this camera that uh, I work in real world uh, units, so um, I have to really scro scroll to make the camera moving. Uh, where I am. Uh, oh, actually, that's weird. That camera doesn't work. Whatever. Uh, so this is the preview of uh, of the generated forest. Uh, it's basically the uh, first prototype of uh, settings, but um, our designers already uh, made quite a lot new uh, new forest types and species and combination randomization files. Uh, but there's actually another preview. So uh, uh, the algorithm works the way that it, it can also um, it can randomize, but it can also uh, generate kind of like. Um, or charts uh, like uh, shapes uh, uh, for the forest. Okay, I guess that's it for uh, tree generation, trees placement. Um, yeah, um, uh, so. Actually, uh, one way how to generate those trees is to have already uh, some kind of uh, polygons to place them in. But um, just rec recently, I, I had to make a script uh, or a new tool for my other projects where um, the m creation of, uh, of those polygons is kind of sometimes really, really uh, time consuming. So you have to click when you, when you are tracing the shape of the forest. And uh, it's to me, it's really more natural when I use especially a uh, pen and, and tablet uh, to make some just uh, to make a sketches. So I make a really simple tool. Um, I don't have uh, I don't have UI for it right now, but it works the way that I can really just uh, sketch the like simple shape here. And when I press F, it makes the polygon. Uh, also, um, if I, um, if I make a mistake and let's say um, something like this, I can go back to uh, delete it and, and finish it. And there's also possibility, as you can see, for example, in this case, there are some holes in in the uh, in the forest, so I can designate right now, like pressing uh, a short key, that this will be, it's usually called an island. Uh, uh, once again. Um, so we'll just make it with the basic shape. So I can designate the, the island and add one, let's say here. And it creates creates those uh, holes, so the the trees won't be won't be generated here. Uh, and I actually uh, plan to do uh, do it a little bit more advanced, so to connect that that forest tool directly to this. So once I'm done uh, sketching, right after the the uh, trees can be generated into let's say txt file. So uh, the prototyping prototyping is uh, much more streamlined and and fast. 
Okay. Um, as a uh, technical environment artist, sometimes I'm asked to do some some voodoo uh, for the designers and. Okay, I guess I don't have the file here, but I can show you show you later. Uh, another, well, not voodoo, was for the for the designers, which actually wanted to see whole Chernars um, in, in a quick preview uh, uh, um, in an application they can basically uh, uh, download somewhere, and it's for free, like Blender. So they don't have to fire up a whole engine if uh, they're, let's say, at home, they just can uh, load it. Uh, in Blender, so this is Chernarus, that's the map uh, which is used in the in the Daisy and Arma 2. So basically, uh, there's Terran import. Uh, this actually this material it's um, uh, can be used, I guess, real time because that's uh, it has nodes here. Uh, the Terran is actually really really big. I mean, there's a uh, yeah eight point four million triangles. So um, it will take a while if once it's selected, but I guess it's yeah. So basically you can see here the um, the shader. So uh, if any change is done to the map, uh, they just uh, import it once again and uh, it's uh, the coloration is changed in, in real time. They also wanted to uh, see some Previews of uh, of it selected. Oh. Uh, for uh, another data, uh, for example, the the satellite imagery. Uh, it's actually a really huge file. I guess six hundred big uh, six hundred megabytes. So it takes a while. They can quickly preview all the places. Also, these uh, uh, these names of the of the cities and and villages uh, can be dynamically changed if they make a change into some config files. And there, I guess, it's one more layer. Yeah, I'm not sure what are. These tiers are, but uh, should be something like for um, uh, spawning some loots and and stuff. And basically, they they just draw it and and can visualize it in uh, in three D. Okay. Uh, okay, I have another video. So. Um, there's actually a, a one more Bohemia interactive, and uh, uh, it's a simulation part, which does quite a lot of, uh, well, only simulation for military. Um, uh, I've been working there for uh, uh, four years, and uh, uh, basically it uses the same engine, the same tools with the same problems, so um, uh, I also use these tools there. Uh, so I'm going to sh quickly show you um, yeah. So for um, for a promo uh, promo video, uh, or we made a promo video to promote uh, a new new uh, a product called VBS3, which stands for Virtu Virtual Battle Space. It's being used uh, by uh, many militaries all, all over the world. I uh, just quickly jump. Uh, so there's quite a lot of uh, new features for uh, rendering quite huge uh, terrains, but I will jump quickly to the one to showcase, and basically which was done in, in Blender. So this great technology, uh, so we, we basically needed to model a creek uh, and place it on the map, but uh, we don't have a possibility to export terrain. Uh, from our tool to modeling tool, so artists can take it. But 
through my Blender Terrain tools, I just imported uh, the terrain, exported it into to Artis, maybe uh, also designing, designating some shape of the creek, so they can take it, model it, and uh, give it to me so I can place it you know, into the map. But there was, um, so the tool we use uh, pretends to be really clever, so um, when you place object, uh, it, it is always snapped to the terrain, uh, so you don't have to positioning like uh, in Unreal Engine, for example. Um, but uh, you can also like move it up and down uh, and saving the relative uh, uh, distance fro from the terrain. But the problem was that uh, when I was sculpting terrain in our tool, uh, every time I place the, the, the creek into the correct position, uh, and I sculpt the terrain around to hide all the gets the, uh, the model gets um, moved or shifted. So that's why I just um, again fired up um, Blender uh, and just positioned it. All, did all the sculptings all around the uh, all around the location or the model, and uh, exported the, the terrain into the file, imported into the other engine, and as well just uh, exported the uh, the position of uh, of the uh, of the model. Uh, there's there was actually quite a lot of uh, prototyping uh, as a part of my uh, responsibilities, and uh, uh, prototyping for new for new features like. Um, uh, bridges and, and and tunnels. So uh, there was also a nice uh, task for Blender Terrain Tools. So here we have a uh, tunnel. There, there's the. Actually, I can do a fly through quickly. So uh, with the use of uh, of splines and some shapes, I could basically quickly uh, create a few models. Oops. Um, uh, have them uh, uh, placed in the, in the in the landscape, and um, a tool basically, which is not part of the of the uh, Blender terrain tools, uh, took the models here from the from from its uh, absolute world position, uh, split it into smaller pieces, uh, so uh, uh, so the colliders can be done a little bit easier, and it was uh, converted into the uh, P3D file, which is our internal internal format. Uh, there's actually also exported uh, exporter and importer to Blender, so uh, Arma community basically can use it um, uh, for the model creation, and it was then again placed in the in the engine uh, and ready for testing. Uh, there's another thing, but I don't have uh, files. I have just a few few screenshots. So this was another uh, technology we had to test. It was a, co a river technology. Uh, and I basically needed quickly to create some some map uh, with some slopes. So this is actually the, the screenshot from the uh, I'm sorry from the VBS engine from its editor. Uh, yeah, it's a nice slide, and it was basically done really quickly in in Blender. So I basically uh, imported the terrain, uh, uh, did a shape of uh, of, of the water and other terrain was basically snapped with the shrink wrap modifier uh, uh, to uh, to this shape and also exported into the engine. Okay, I guess this is uh, all for the BI sim uh, and. Uh, just recently, I started working with uh, Unreal Engine uh, for my like personal uh, projects, and um, as you may know, uh, there's quite nice tools for uh, uh, landscape uh, creation, sculpting, uh, surfaces painting, or uh, uh, trees placement. But there are still something what I miss, and uh, I again made a made a tool uh, which is um, it takes. Some 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 of the some of the features from uh, from Blender Terrain tool. Uh, it has really really long names. So I for now so it's called Blender Landscape Tools for uh, Unreal Engine 4. Uh, 
But um, let me quickly uh, just uh, install it. And I will show you what is it about. So yeah, um, in short, it's basically BLT for UE4. Okay, yes, please. It basically does the same, like import the terrain. You can you can do the same stuff, but uh, it's more uh, related to Unreal Engine and the structures the terrain has. Uh, so, uh, so let's quickly enable it. Let me show you. Save landscape tools. Okay, so um. um so as I have a, a background in GIS, uh, I also have some uh, friends at, uh, uh, it's called Institute for Planning and um, Development of, uh, of Prague City, where I live. And uh, they uh, uh, recently released uh, really high-risk data, geodata, and opened them actually for everyone to use. So I decided to, um, to play with them, so I just won't uh, blindly follow some tutorials. So I really needed um, a solid project and solid terrain. Uh, so I just quickly show you how it looks like. So these data, uh, they uh, include, the, the geo, geo data include really high risk of one meter uh, terrain, uh, satellite imagery in 10 centimeters resolution, uh, 3D buildings, and quite a lot of um, uh, data for automated placement. So as you, as you will see, I can I can create roads uh, or generate roads with the help of the of, of Blender. I can um, also um, place um, uh, street lamps, and there's definitely uh, much more, even manholes. So um, so for now, I um, I don't know if uh, the result of this will be a game. It will it will it will be an application. Uh, we'll see. I'm actually still sucks in, in Unreal Engine. Uh, so, oops, this will be better, I guess. So this is the location uh, uh, four by four kilometers um, around my home where I actually moved a few months ago. So I live here, uh, here in the middle. It's a really nice place, location, I really like it. So this is the Vltava River, the main river, which uh, flows through through Prague. So basically, this is it, this is the data. Uh, uh, there are 3D buildings, here there are roads, there are even trees, but uh, that's, that was just made quickly for this presentation. As you can see, there are also uh, kind of like a splat mask, uh, which defines where the grass will be, uh, where the different textures will be uh, rendered. And there's also some kind of a shader which basically makes the uh, satellite imagery in the in the distance with the details uh, detailed surfaces uh, on the ground. It is a typical shader in many other games. Uh, so as I mentioned, there are roads, there are um, there are street lamps, which basically, as I said, was placed uh, based on this geodata. And now back to Blender. So um, let's quickly create a new. Oh, actually, I already have their um, project. Prague. Yeah. So the import basically works the same way as I showed you with the with the Blender terrain tools. So there's there's a preview. I can uh, pick a location uh, and and import it. But actually, I I forgot to mention one really essential uh, essential uh, feature, and that is that is uh, basically the conversion of a uh, of a models, which I can uh, basically convert into blend files and import them into the map. Uh, and um, there's during this project, I was actually really struggling. Uh, so I'm not sure if anyone is there. Actually, anyone here using uh, Unreal Engine? And okay, uh, and do you export models? Do you need uh, LODs for the models in the? So um, 
as you may know, there's no pro no no way to export uh, LODs or, or into FBX import them. Well, it, it is basically, but then you have to do all the setting up of the LODs uh, in the uh, uh, manually in the Unreal Engine 4. But there's a kind of quick way. Uh, I'm not sh I'm not saying it's safe way, but for me it's just a work. So I I kind of like. Uh, um, improve the FBX in export, which um, then, uh, which actually basically set up uh, all of the, the models, even the collision co uh, collision uh, meshes, export it into FBX, and it really works when you uh, drag and drop it into the uh, library or then into the uh, viewport, it really basically starts working. Uh, and eventually I would be really glad that uh, if that could be a part of uh, uh, original script uh, which is uh, bundled with uh, with blender so um, I already have a few uh, oops, models uh, converted uh, this is one of the bushes bush models uh, let's, oops now this one oh, not cycles uh, let's go into blender game and Let's give it a hemisphere. So it's all textured. Uh, it has already uh, LODs uh, set up. So it changes, as you may see. Yeah. Uh, as I take advantage of uh, LODs uh, also in the in, in my project. Uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, also I can just uh, as a batch in a batch mode, I can um, I can uh, convert all of these uh, to p3d or to sorry to blend files and also to uh, to fbx so i can work with the blend files in my project and with the fbx in the unreal engine uh, so the way how to get uh, i can close this one and back to the main project yeah so let's quickly import some location Like this one more. And uh, so, when I'm done, once I'm done with the conversion of the models, I can uh, easily create um, a library from from the uh, from the set of uh, set of uh, models. So, for example. Yeah, so, uh, so this library creation uh, is actually part of, of the tool. So it's, it's here, so I can basically uh, point it to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the folder uh, and it set up or import all of the, those models, uh, set up it into a grid, so it's easier to, to uh, have a preview of the models in that uh, library. So um, let's import it into the project. So we have bushes here, import, and it, it appears here as, a, as another scene. Uh, oh yeah. It actually automatically automatically opened the windows, another window, so I have the two monitors set up. So I have this one at, on, um, on uh, another screen. here so um, let's actually import another one so I can show you so right now basically if I want to um, let's open uh, window okay this is a little bit harsh right now but I have just one monitor okay uh, let's switch to uh, to our location and now if I want to uh, a place an, an object, so I just basically, uh, there are actually uh, many possibilities how to do it properly, but I can basically just pick the, pick the object and uh, press paste from library, but usually I have it, I have it uh, mapped on the P button, but I have, I have uh, not set up it here. Uh, I can also uh, place more objects at, at once from the library. 
library so I can so I've been figuring out how, how can I improve this uh, to have it um, done a better way uh, let's import it uh, just to say there's quite a lot of trees I guess in the library So it's here. So this is the library, uh, sorry, the uh, trees library. And um, so I've been thinking how to improve this and I come to select a little bit of a better way. So uh, I can have this uh, pop-up window every time I uh, press, let's say, L, L button, and I can then uh, easily just basically pick one of the trees I need to place, or bushes, or trees, or and whatever uh, objects I have in my libraries. Okay, so what else we have here? Oh, actually, um, there's um, uh, one thing I really miss in the uh, Unreal Engine, and that's what I actually already mentioned: that when you place objects uh, in the uh, in the viewport. Uh, Every time you change the the, the terrain, like the, you sculpt it, uh, the objects won't snap to the terrain, and that's what I've what I've been really missing, and that's what really works here. So even so, I can select more, and it's really being snapped to the terrain as I move with them, or maybe rotate this way, that way, yeah, or as well as I um, I have to. Select the terrain to go into um, sculpt mode. So, yeah. So it's also snapped when I when I'm sculpting objects. So I don't have to uh, reposition them uh, after the sculpting. Uh, so right now I can export terrain. Uh, so this landscape it's based off uh, this um, multi-tile or multi-world te technology. So you can have, you know quite a lot of these terrain tiles. And um, so my tool basically uh, allows me to uh, export um, the whole whole scene, uh, this one, uh, into into tiles. I just basically need to tell him uh, how, how many of these tiles, like four by four, it needs to, it needs to uh, export. It can also, so when I place all these objects, uh, it can uh, export, um, so for example, if I pick this one, it can write file which uh, Unreal Engine can, uh, can read. It's basically really, it's really easy. So this, this is the, um, uh, there are the positions and rotation of, of the object, so this is basically the, uh, the format uh, which I which I taken and and made it to export all of the all of the objects I have uh, in the viewport. Okay, I'm so running out of time, and that's actually um, oh okay. One last thing. Um, uh, so as I was trying to uh, fly, this is actually weird. Okay, it works. Uh, so, uh, regarding the improvements, I would be really glad if um, uh, we could have this this flying. Uh, uh, let's say uh, if I if I change, uh, I heard about this workflow uh, workflows uh, 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 feature in a in a new Blender, uh, and uh, would be nice to have. Let's say if I'm in the my tool workflow uh, to have this uh, camera movement instantly, exactly as I have in, in Unreal Engine, so I don't have to press uh, Shift F and then fly around. And the, sorry for it, but really stupid uh, thing is that I have to confirm it because I usually usually just press the, the right button and I'm back in the location where I was. But anyway, I, lo I love this feature. Uh, 
and uh, also a kind of a problem I have uh, sometimes with the uh, with bigger bigger locations uh, and when there's are quite a lot of trees it's uh, of course performance so we'll see what the uh, new uh, viewport project bring us and yeah and basically those workflows uh, so sometimes it's for for a newbies it's really hard to uh, find things when they actually want to just work with the this landscape tool landscape tool or terrain tool so uh, the rest for them is really distracting so um, um, that's actually why I have right now uh, I have all of the features just right here and not hidden let's say in the objects menu objects tab or, or somewhere else okay so um, I guess uh, that's it uh, so I have also so as I mentioned just um, bear with me I just need again my presentation file <laughs> to render uh, last slide Bear with me. Um, so, as, as I mentioned, so we opened the, uh, a new uh, new office here in uh, in Amsterdam, and uh, we are really looking for a, a technical artist uh, here in in Amsterdam office. Um, here's here's the here's the address. Or basically, if you go to our site, there's a, there's a careers uh, or job offers uh, uh, section. Um, uh, we don't really mind if uh, uh, you are um, you, you work in the in the uh, Maya Max or Blender. Uh, there's a, already quite a lot of guys uh, in our company using Blender, and uh, uh, till I'm there, uh, you can be sure that there will be still some exporters and import, importers for uh, for uh, Blender. Also, some as as you can see, some tools uh, to work with with Blender and our our engine. Um, so uh, here's the contact. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, suggestions, whatever, uh, just bump to me. I have this T-shirt. My name is Miro. Maybe there will be some more guys with this T-shirt, but <laughs> I'm Miro. Uh, so and I guess that's it. Um, thank you. Thank you for uh, for watching.